Uh, my name is Neil Barber. I'm a consultant urological surgeon at Frimley Park Hospital, part of Frimley Health NHS Foundation Trust. I'm head of the Frimley Renal Cancer Centre uh, and chair of the Regional Renal Cancer Specialist MDT uh, for the St Luke's Cancer Alliance, which is a cancer uh, region out of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, Frimley Park uh, Renal Cancer Centre is the specialist centre for renal cancer surgery for the whole of the Alliance. Uh, and that means that most of the specialist surgery comes here and more core level surgery is done uh, in other outlying hospitals. Uh, this means that a lot of what we do uh, is uh, complex surgery for kidneys and involves uh, the Da Vinci robot to help us achieve this. The majority of surgery for kidney cancer these days is performed via minimally invasive techniques uh, and the uh, latest uh, evolution of that is robotic assisted surgery also known as RAS, R-A-S, and you may see that uh, linked to uh, a number of operation descriptions. Uh, the Da Vinci robot uh, is in fact a robotic slave, so the, the robot does not do the surgery, it is manipulated by the surgeon uh, semi-remotely. It's made up of three parts. Uh, the first part is the robotic slave itself, uh, which uh, docks onto the surgical ports uh, and holds the instruments. There is then also an audio-visual platform which also has a light source, so you can see what you're doing inside, uh, as well as transferring information uh, from the third part, which is the surgeon's console, through to the robot. The surgeon himself sits remotely from the patient, but by the patient bedside there are two equally important people, that is the scrub nurse and the surgical assistant. The surgeon sits down in comfort, looking into a viewing screen, uh, and manipulates the robot using two handheld uh, devices. The advantage of the robot are really in terms of its precision. It gives you 3D imaging thanks to twin cameras which then feed that vision through to the viewing um, part of the console. Uh, and also the manipulators allow the instruments to move um, with gearing so there's very fine control and very fine uh, dissection as possible. And lastly the instruments themselves have wrists. That's opposed to standard keyhole uh, instruments which uh, can only be manipulated in terms of rotation. These instruments with wrists means that you have unbelievable dexterity in terms of handling tissue and performing operations. The Da Vinci robot has been around now for some 15 years in the UK, um, but, but it has gone through an evolution of technology much as ev everything else has, and we're now uh, on our fourth incarnation. Um, there are now, I think, 40 robots in the UK dotted around in various cancer centres. The drive for the arrival of this robotic slave in, into the country was, was through urology and in performing a radical prostatectomy, uh, but its use has been expanded over time, and particularly now uh, there is recognition of the importance it can play uh, in complex surgery for renal cancer. It's also being used for other specialties, notably gynaecology uh, and now colorectal surgery, and they're looking to expand use in cardiothoracic surgery. As regards uh, surgery for renal cancer, the Da Vinci robot has a number of roles, but probably the most important one is that of performing uh, nephron sparing surgery in the form of a partial nephrectomy. Uh, the procedure uh, is performed under general anaesthetic and normally takes anywhere for an hour and a half to three hours, depending upon that complexity. And there are a number of approaches in performing this. Most will involve uh, four ports, that is, uh, tools placed through the abdominal wall to allow the insertions of instruments, much as one does in standard laparoscopy. Uh, and they need to be placed more towards the front of the tummy or towards the back of the tummy, depending on the surgeon's preference, that is their approach to the kidney. Uh, I believe that it's really important that we improve the information and understanding that patients have uh, about renal cancer, particularly the surgery that they may have. Uh, this may be the first operation, uh, sadly, that people would have had um, in their lives. As such, I've created uh, a number of animations depicting particularly uh, the role of robotic assisted surgery to try and help people understand uh, the procedure uh, in a way which isn't off-putting but leaves them feeling uh, knowledgeable about what is going to happen to them. The animation starts with the patient positioned on the operating table lying on his or her side and the table bent to expose the gap between the ribs and the pelvis. The robot is docked and once inside uh, then we initially identify the renal artery place a rubber sling around it to identify it for later.
Uh, and then we move towards cleaning the fat off the kidney to uh, identify the tumour. Once this is done, uh, the two clamps are placed on the renal artery to cut off the blood supply to the kidney. Such that we can excise the tumour with a rim of normal tissue around it to confirm that it has been completely removed with minimal bleeding. The tumour is then placed in a bag for safe removal. The most important thing during this procedure is to gain good control of uh, the blood supply through the kidney. The main potential complications are bleeding uh, and urine leak. Uh, the kidneys having a massive blood supply for their size uh, and of course making urine, uh, there are many little tubes equivalent to pipes running through the kidney uh, and urine leak is always a concern. But the main thing that we worry about is the potential for massive bleeding. I initially start the closure of the defect by running a suture across the base and this will get control of the larger blood vessels and the drainage system of the kidney, hopefully minimising the risk of both those complications. The articulation of the robotic instruments allows one to place the sutures at almost any angle one wants to make sure the sutures are placed in the best possible position to have the best outcome um, in controlling uh, particularly blood vessels. The next layer uh, is some larger suture uh, which is placed uh, in an interrupted fashion, that is one at a time, across the defect. Using a technique called sliding renorophy, one cinches down the edges of the defect using these plastic polymer clips which will slide on the braided suture one way but not the other way hence gaining secure closure uh, of the renal defect. One places as many of these sutures as required to achieve good control uh, bleeding. Once the defect is closed, I then use a tissue glue over the surface of the defect. The clamps are removed off the artery, we check that there's no bleeding, the robot is undocked uh, and the specimen is then removed through one of the port sites. Surgery remains the mainstay of treatment aimed at cure for those sadly diagnosed with renal cancer. These days, uh, most of these operations are done via a minimally invasive approach, but open surgery uh, still uh, is performed when the tumours are very large and not amenable to uh, laparoscopic or robotic-assisted surgery. More and more of the tumours diagnosed are of smaller size, often less than 4 centimetres or in the 4 to 7 centimetre range, and it is within most guidelines that we should, in those instances, be thinking about nephron sparing surgery, uh, the nephrons being the functioning unit of the kidney, and that kind of surgery involving either excision of the mass uh, in a partial nephrectomy or ablating it with either cold or heat uh, in cryoablation or something like radiofrequency ablation. Here at Frimley uh, Renal Cancer Centre, uh, most of the work being referred to us from other hospitals uh, is for patients requiring nephron sparing surgery. The majority of those will undergo robotic assisted partial nephrectomy. Within the armamentarium of options, uh, more and more cases are being performed in this manner uh, and last year some 50 to 55 percent of all our operations robo were robotically assisted. The robotic assisted partial nephrectomy has now been recognised as beneficial to both patients and hospitals alike uh, by NHS England in a preliminary statement, although we're waiting for formal ratification in terms of confirmation uh, for commissioning, hopefully later this year. The scope of what can be performed with the robot in terms of nephron sparing surgery, uh, in my hands at least, has grown considerably over the last two or three years, with increasingly complex procedures more and more possible for larger and larger tumours. I very strongly believe that this is a surgical option that should be available for all people, irrespective of their postcode, and sadly, two years ago, uh, in the national audit of partial nephrectomy, uh, it remained the case that over 50% of the procedures were performed as open surgery, uh, meaning larger, more painful wounds with longer recovery time. The now recognised advantage of the robotic-assisted approach, uh, both in terms of lower complications, lower ischemic time, that is how long the blood supply is cut off to the kidney, and more rapid discharge from hospital and return to normal activities, uh, means that there are benefits to both the hospital, the healthcare system and of course most importantly the patient whilst achieving the same levels of cancer cure. 
Renal cancer, sadly, is one of the few cancers increasing in incidence in modern society. There are thought to be a number of factors uh, relating to that, but probably the most important one is uh, the number of scans that people are having of their abdomen for other reasons, be they ultrasound scans or CT scans. The majority of patients then refer to me here at a referral centre uh, for nephron-sparing surgery have had their tumours discovered entirely by chance, that is, they are incidental. They suffer no symptoms from them uh, at all. The normal pathway uh, then of ending up coming to see me here might be uh, following a GP arranging a scan for some abdominal discomfort or some other kind of symptoms. That's ultrasound scan picking up a lump in the kidney uh, and then the hospital contacting the patient saying you need a CT scan to evaluate things more formally. What treatment will be required for that renal cancer, which always, almost always means surgery if it hasn't spread anywhere, uh, will then depend upon the size and location of the tumour as well as other factors such as the age of the patient and their otherwise um, uh, state of health. If the tumour is small in the correct position or even larger with uh, some good uh, anatomical aspects, then nephron sparing surgery may be possible and that should always be performed in a regional renal cancer centre. If the more standard approach of complete removal of the kidney and the tumour, that is a radical nephrectomy, is to be performed, usually these days via a laparoscopic or keyhole approach, then that may be performed in a more local hospital, still by a specialist surgeon. Within the region, all those treating kidney cancer, uh, be it in the local hospitals performing radical nephrectomies or in the specialist centres performing more complex surgery, must attend the regional renal cancer specialist MDT now on a weekly basis, where all new kidney cancers and other cases will be reviewed by that team. By creating a good functioning team between hospitals and institutions in partnership with the oncologists, then we hope to provide the highest quality care that we can for those sadly diagnosed with kidney cancer at whatever stage of the disease they present.